What is going on guys, Nick here back with another video. Apple, the most valuable company on the stock market with a two and a quarter trillion dollar market cap has had a great year if you've owned the stock with about a 70% jump in the share price. With all of the buzz around the 5G iPhone super cycle, services and the Apple car, I thought I would take a look at how well is the business really doing? What is the stock actually worth? And is it too late to buy shares now? So let's start with what exactly is the iPhone super cycle? Well, the theory is that as smartphones and especially iPhones get better each year, they tend to last longer and they're more capable of keeping up with their utilization demands. People end up keeping their iPhone longer because the new version isn't enough of an improvement to justify the upgrade. Eventually though, the phones will wear out. The battery health degrades, the screen resolution starts to look worse, and the old processors can't keep up with the current operating system. Specifically with the iPhone 12, the idea is that the new design will draw enough people who have been holding out to go ahead and upgrade. The iPhone 12 has an updated case design going back to the iPhone 4 and iPhone 5 edges, an improved camera, and what most seem to see as the biggest game changer. 5G support. Now Apple sells most of its iPhones in the first quarter of each year, which is from October to December. We actually just got the information from the first quarter of 2021. Unfortunately though, Apple stopped providing the number of units sold for iPhones, but we can see the revenue. In the first quarter of 2021, Apple sold a record $65 billion worth of iPhones, up from $55 billion in 2020. Now I think an important point is the resiliency of the iPhone sales. Even though that this year has been very tough economically, Apple was able to break its own sales record for the iPhone. Most of us probably know this already, but Apple also has the Mac, the iPad, wearables, and the service section. While these segments are much smaller than iPhone revenue, wearables and services are quickly growing. Wearables include the AirPods, Apple TV, the Apple Watch, Beats, HomePod, the iPod Touch, and other Apple and third-party accessories. The services segment includes Apple Care, which is basically an extended warranty and additional tech support. So Apple has made a transition to emphasize the services business. In 2018, as I said earlier, they stopped reporting the unit sales for the iPhone, the iPad, and the Mac. Until this point, pretty much every quarterly earnings release, the entire focus was on how many iPhones were sold. But Apple seems to understand that there would only be so much growth that they would be able to achieve through iPhones alone. Last week, it was announced that Apple was making what could be a pretty big announcement for them, good or bad. Apple is close to finalizing a deal with Hyundai Kia to manufacture Apple brand autonomous vehicles at a Kia assembly plant, although it's not entirely clear if Hyundai will join the deal. The goal is to make a fully autonomous Apple car scheduled for production in 2024. Now Apple's interest is in building a car with an established manufacturer in North America, who would also allow Apple to control the software and the hardware used in the vehicle. CNBC reported that a source with knowledge of the current plans, that the first cars will not be designed to have a driver, and that the cars will be autonomous electric vehicles designed to operate without a driver and focused on the last mile. But it's not exactly clear how they would pull this off though. So far, nobody has built a fully autonomous vehicle, and it seems like those who have gotten closest to working towards that goal have tons and tons of data that they've used to train the autonomous systems. Tesla has been collecting sensor feedback from vehicles that are out on the road. Waymo has a massive 91 acre training course with years of development. So this entire project to me seems kind of like a long shot, especially with the 2024 timeline. But I will say if Apple can pull this off, I would not be entirely surprised. They've always been extremely bold with the steps that they're willing to make and don't often spend much time with products that don't end up working out although there certainly has been a few over the years. I assume that technology improvement will help them catch up with the machine learning that they need. So let's take a look at how well they're actually performing. Looking at revenue, operating income, and net income, we can see what the iPhone super cycle looks like. We can see the 2015, the 2018, and the start of the 2021 trailing 12 months boost. 2021 is still a little lower because we only have the first quarter reported so far, and the other three to make up the year are pre-iPhone 12 numbers from the second quarter to to the fourth quarter of 2020. We also see pretty healthy profit margins with an insane $64 billion in profit over the last year. Usually I try not to get too carried away with these numbers, but this is really an insane amount of profit. It actually places them in the top two or three for the most profitable businesses in the world. Looking at their expenses, the majority of the cost goes into the cost of revenue, while a pretty modest amount is split between research and development and sales, general and administrative costs. 
Keep in mind that because of the scale of the revenue that each of these segments are right around $20 billion. Now when we look at products versus service revenue, we can see just how much bigger the products business is compared to the service business. We can also see the last peak of the iPhone super cycle versus the start of the 2021 super cycle peak. Services show clear growth, especially when we zoom in to see this on a larger scale. Apple knew to grow, it would have to capitalize on the well integrated hardware ecosystem they had built. They also get a lot more profit for each dollar of service revenue generated. We can see this on the two charts where products resulted in about 25% gross profit margin and services generate about 65% gross profit margin. When we look at revenue versus profit broken down by geographical region, it's no surprise that the Americas, Europe, and China generate most of the sales. Japan and the rest of Asia are relatively flat. When we zoom in, it is concerning just how much of a decline they've shown in China. This is obviously a huge potential market and it would be a lot better to see them selling more in this region. Apple has a small market share compared to the Chinese companies in China with about 8% of the market, while Huawei, a Chinese company, is number one with 40%. According to data out of China, the iPhone 12 has done very well in China with about 20% market share of smartphone shipments in the fourth quarter. Most seem to think that this is because of the adoption of 5G in the iPhone 12 and Chinese consumers upgrading from 4G. I don't expect this to become the start of a new trend though. Their balance sheet shows $354 billion in assets assets to $287 billion in liabilities. This gives us $66 billion in equity. They reported $108 billion in debt, so this gives us a debt to equity ratio of 1.62. Not a great ratio, but not the worst. They did report $36 billion in cash, so that does certainly help a little bit. Okay, so let's take a look at what Apple stock should be worth. But before I do that, if you could just take one second to scroll down and hit the like button, I would really appreciate it. These videos do take a lot of research and it helps out every time you guys hit the like button for me. Looking at the forecasted future earnings, analysts seem to think that revenue will smooth out instead of the usual drop off after the iPhone super cycle. They're forecasting all the way out to 2023 to earn $365 billion in revenue and $82 billion in profits. Looking at revenue growth per year, we can see the same pattern again with double digit growth in the super cycle years and then a nearly flat year followed up with a pretty consistent 6% growth year. So I thought an easier way to look at this would be to compare each year to three years before and then average that growth over the three years. So comparing each super cycle peak to the next, and then the year after the super cycle peak to the next year after the super cycle. This is called the three year average. We can see how if the forecasts are accurate, Apple's growth would have to be accelerating. And to me, this really just doesn't make that much sense. I'm actually going to reforecast revenue and net income to grow at 7% annual growth from three years prior. Normally this is the part of the video where I would go through the PE ratio and I would correlate it with the growth rate I expect Apple to achieve. But I'm going to save you some time here and say based off of this metric, it is pretty overvalued. And that's okay because Apple pays a dividend and if you remember back to my McDonald's video, when a stock pays a dividend, it tends to dominate the valuation. Usually the higher quality of the business, the lower dividend yield you can expect. The highest quality companies usually pay about 2% dividend yield. Looking at Apple, they have pretty much paid a 1-2% to dividend yield, but this has declined significantly in the past year as the share price has really risen. Apple has pretty consistently paid 21% of their earnings per share as a dividend. So this would mean that we can expect for 2021, 2022, and 2023 a total of 93 cents, 97 cents, and a dollar four in dividends. At a 1% yield, which is right around where Apple has traded recently, this would make Apple pretty expensive compared to the forward dividend expectations with $93, $97, and $104 valuations based off of the dividends. Now I don't think that this means that if you own Apple you need to sell immediately and get out of the stock, but I do think that there is some real risk right now that if any pessimism develops surrounding the business, something that has happened in the years between the super cycle, you might end up getting a retraction in the share price. If you own Apple stock, I would recommend holding unless there's a business that you like better long term and you need to get some cash to transfer to it. I actually have a pretty good amount of Apple in my portfolio and it's the one stock that I've held for a while that I've been willing to trim when I see something else I want to invest in. I like the business long term, but I'm not really that sure about its growth. In general, I'll only close out a position entirely if it's so overvalued I could never see the price being justified. This is running the risk that the share price remains stagnant for a while or could fall since there doesn't seem to be as much upside right now. 
However, I have owned it for so long that my average cost after the split is only around $50. So right now for me, I'm collecting a 1.6% dividend. But either way, the point of these videos isn't really about my opinion. The goal is to really look through these businesses and show you what I find good or bad so that you can make an informed decision about a stock that you might be interested in buying. I don't care about hyping stuff up or picking and choosing what to show you to support my conclusion. I think it's really important to have a realistic understanding of where things stand with the business, especially if you currently own or want to own a stock. Okay, so that's the video. If you found it helpful, make sure you subscribe and hit the bell notification so you know whenever I upload a new video. And as always, thanks for watching.